Hi there, and welcome to this podcast from Adept English. Today, two amazing stories from the world of science, which both concern human body parts. But one of these, I think, is wonderful and could have far-reaching benefits for all kinds of people. The other one is amazing, but seems to me absolutely pointless. Let's see if you agree with me. I do think we have a responsibility to spend our money and scientific expertise on things which are actually going to do good in the world and have meaning. Just because we can do something technologically doesn't mean we should. See what you think of this. And the human body parts I'm talking about today, tongs, that's that, and eyes, E-Y-E-S, these. And while you're listening to this interesting topic, as ever, your brain will get its English language practice. See how many words you don't know and see how much you improve when you've watched or listened to this two, three or four times. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. First of all, if you like Adept English and you'd like to help us without spending any money, there are ways to do this. You could post a comment on our channel, whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify or YouTube. If you've never done it before, just say hello and say what you think of the podcast. Comments really help our listener statistics, as does watching right to the end of the video. It's tough out there. It's difficult to get lots of views these days. But if you help us in this way, it means more people will find Adept English and be able to improve their English. And it means we can keep producing podcasts and episodes. Adept English will continue to be around, in other words. Thank you for doing that for us. So, I read an online article in the magazine Vice, V-I-C-E, and this is the headline. Scientists built an artificial tongue that tastes and learns like the real thing. This article was written by Ashley Fike and published on the 12th of August 2025. So, remember, that's your tongue, T-O-N-G-U-E. So scientists at the National Center for Nanoscience and Technology in China have made an artificial tongue that can taste things. In laboratory tests, the tongue identified sweet, sour, salty and bitter flavors with quite a high degree of accuracy, 72.5% to 87.5%. You probably know the adjectives for taste, sweet, S-W-E-E-T, and salty, S-A-L-T-Y, but sour, S-O-U-R. Well, a sour taste would be something like yogurt, especially unsweetened, that's sour. And bitter, B-I-T-T-E-R, well, that would be the taste of something like olives, although olives are also salty. And interestingly, the article says that the accuracy of the artificial tongue goes up to about 96% when it's tasting Coca-Cola or coffee. This is because they, and I'm quoting, contain more complex chemical patterns. Presumably, that's why human beings enjoy Coca-Cola and coffee. Anyway, Professor Yong Yan, co-author of the study, said, our devices, that means the artificial tongs, work in liquid and can sense their environment and process information just like our nervous system does. That's the human nervous system, he means. OK, all very clever, I thought, but what is this artificial tongue actually useful for? The artificial intelligence behind it is hardly going to take any pleasure from being able to taste, is it? So what use do these artificial tongs actually have? The article suggested that 
all people who have lost their sense of taste after a stroke or a nerve injury, this could help restore a connection to flavour. To me, this seems pretty pointless. If you're unlucky enough to have lost your sense of taste, and how miserable that must be, you're hardly going to feel that your quality of life is improved by an artificial tongue being able to tell you about the flavour of something. Are there any further uses of this artificial tongue? More useful uses, perhaps? Well, not really, from what I could work out. The article says, and I'm sure those who funded this research paid for it would say, it could flag food safety hazards before they left the factory. It could perform real-time quality checks in beverage production. Beverage means a drink. Remember, the tongue only works in liquid. It's not so good with solid food. Or it could detect illness by spotting changes in saliva, S-A-L-I-V-A, -A, that's the liquid in our mouths, saliva. Or in remote areas, it's suggested that the artificial tongue might be able to track water quality. Well, fine, but it doesn't need to be a tongue to do that. It's more like a sensor, surely. This story seemed to me to be about some clever scientists with funding, with money, doing something scientifically just because they can. And they're trying to think up a purpose after the event. Luckily, I found the next story, which made me feel better. And it was published on the same day, 12th of August 2025. This one is about eyes. So this story was published in the online magazine Popular Mechanics. And the title was Scientists have found a hidden trigger that could make your eyes regenerate. It was written by Darren Orff and the verb to regenerate means to make yourself anew, to generate again. So lots of animals can do this. We've all heard of lizards who lose a tail and grow a new one. That means their tail has been regenerated. So apparently scientists have been studying a snail. That's S-N-A-I-L. A snail is an animal and an invertebrate. It doesn't have bones, in other words. So snails are small animals, and in France, people gather them and eat them with garlic butter. Very nice. I like snails, in that context anyway. Much less keen when they're in my garden eating my plants. If you still don't know what a snail is, it's a little creature that carries its shell on its back and they'll hide inside the shell if they don't like what's going on. That's a snail. Anyway, scientists have been studying a particular type of snail called the apple snail. It sounds like a new apple device, doesn't it? But no, it's a creature, an animal. And the interest? Well, this little snail can, wait for it, regenerate its eyes. That means it grows new eyes. The article says, although separated by hundreds of millions of years of evolution, that's E-V-O-L-U-T-I-O-N, human eyes and apple snail eyes have remarkable similarities, both physically and genetically. So you can guess what's coming next, can't you? If science learns how the apple snail can regenerate its eyes, is there a way to help human beings do the same? That really would be a breakthrough and something fantastic. Like a lizard growing a new tail, but even better. Vision restored for people who are blind or partially sighted. And apparently these apple snails breed so fast, they multiply in number very fast. They are a problem in the environment where they live, which is generally in South America. In fact, they're classed as one of the top 100 most invasive species. These are the animals that there are far too many of. And that word is invasive, I-N-V-A-S-I-V-E. -E. Plants as well as animals can be described as invasive. But aside from being a pest, P-E-S-T, the apple snail has an amazing ability to regenerate its own eyes if they're damaged. They grow new ones, in other words. Alice Akorsi, an assistant professor of molecular and cellular biology at the University of California, 
Davis Campus, she has spent time studying these snails. Both humans and apple snails have eyes that work like a camera. Both have corneas, lenses and retinas and very similar genes. For an apple snail, the process of making new eyes takes only a month. Alice Accorsi said, if we find a set of genes that are important for eye regeneration, and these genes are also present in vertebrates, that means animals with spines or bones like human beings, then in theory, we could activate these genes to enable eye regeneration. Can you imagine? Someone loses an eye or their sight is damaged. And over a month, there is a process that would enable them to grow a new eye. How fantastic would that be? And all down to our genes being similar to a snail, which is considered a pest. And the idea of regenerating human eyes was the subject of another study published earlier this year in the journal Nature Communications. This study looked at how to regenerate the retina. R-E-T-I-N-A. That's the screen at the back of the eye, essential for vision. And for this, scientists are studying the zebrafish because it can grow new retinas in its eyes. Researchers found that by inhibiting or switching off a particular protein, that's P-R-O-T-E-I-N, called PROX1, retinas could be regenerated in mice too. Roughly 300 million people worldwide have some form of problem with their retina, which can seriously reduce their vision or cause blindness. They can't see, in other words. So this research, inspired by the amazing eye regeneration abilities of the zebrafish, is really important. And scientists are also looking at animals like hippopotamuses, because apparently they too can regenerate cells in their eyes. How amazing is that? We humans may be the intelligent ones in the world, with the big brains, but incredible animals, amazing creatures, have so much that we can learn from. Human beings are pretty good at regenerating certain body tissues but we can't regrow whole body parts like lizards and reptiles, or not yet. Millions of years of evolution, and nature has generally found the best way to do things. There are so many possibilities by studying this. So what do you think of those two science stories? Do you agree with me that one of them seems incredibly useful and full of potential, and the other seems like people just playing around with science and artificial intelligence in a lab because they can. Let us know what you think. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye.